Rita sat at the edge of her bed, the soft glow of the evening sun filtering through the curtains. It had been months since she returned from Singapore, but the nightmare of that trip still haunted her. She pressed her hand gently to her side, the scar a cruel reminder of the betrayal she never saw coming. Tears welled up in her eyes as she thought back to the day she met him, the day she thought she had found love again. Her story began innocently enough. In July 2021, Rita had attended a regular Sunday service at her local church in Ablakuma, Greater Accra. She had been a member of the church for years, drawn in after the devastating loss of both her parents. Her mother had died of kidney failure, a painful and slow decline that had broken Rita's heart. Her father, consumed by grief, passed away just a few months later. Alone and broken, Rita had sought solace in her faith, hoping the church would provide the family and comfort she so desperately needed. It was on that fateful Sunday that Rita first saw him. King. He was tall, handsome, with a warm smile that made her feel safe the moment they shook hands. He introduced himself after the service, offering to pray for her. His voice was gentle, full of sincerity, and Rita felt something stir in her heart, something she hadn't felt in years. King was kind, respectful, and most importantly, he seemed to understand her pain. Within weeks, their friendship grew, and soon it blossomed into a relationship. Rita, you deserve happiness. You deserve someone who will take care of you, King would say, his eyes full of warmth. He would call her every night, his voice a soothing balm to the loneliness she had carried since her parents' deaths. You're my angel, he whispered one evening as they sat together at a quiet cafe after church. God has a plan for us. I truly believe we were meant to meet. I've never felt this way before. Rita blushed, her heart fluttering. It felt too good to be true. King was everything she had prayed for. He was attentive, thoughtful, and respectful of her boundaries. He never pressured her for intimacy, always insisting that they remain pure in their relationship, adhering to Christian values. It seemed like God had finally answered her prayers. One day, just a month and two weeks after they began dating, King surprised her with a proposal. No, not of marriage, but something equally romantic in Rita's eyes. Let's go on a trip, just you and me, he said with a grin. I want to show you the world. How about Dubai? Rita's eyes widened in disbelief. Dubai? Are you serious? Of course, King replied, holding her hands across the table. I've already started processing the documents. I want to give you the best experiences in life. You deserve to be treated like the queen you are. Rita sat next to King on the plane, her fingers entwined with his as they soared through the skies. The excitement of their upcoming adventure in Dubai buzzed in her veins. She couldn't believe how quickly her life had changed in just a few months. From the first moment she met King at church, everything seemed to fall into place. He had been her anchor, her comfort, especially after the devastating loss of her parents. As she looked out the window, watching the clouds drift by, Rita smiled to herself. King had been nothing short of a dream. Not only was he kind and generous, but he had given her something she hadn't realized she needed. A sense of belonging. He was always there for her, attending to her needs, planning surprises, and showing her parts of life she had never imagined. And now they were heading to Dubai, a trip he had meticulously planned just for the two of them. Are you excited? King asked, leaning in and brushing a strand of hair behind her ear. Rita nodded, beaming. I can't believe we're actually doing this. Thank you, King. 
You've made me feel like the luckiest woman in the world. He squeezed her hand, his eyes full of warmth. Anything for you, my love. You deserve the world, and I want to be the man to give it to you. Rita's heart swelled at his words. It had been years since anyone had made her feel this cherished. After the passing of her mother to kidney failure and the heartbreak of losing her father soon after, she thought she would never experience love again. But King had changed everything. The flight passed quickly and soon they were stepping off the plane into the dazzling lights of Dubai. The city was everything King had promised. Vibrant, luxurious and full of possibilities. They stayed at a lavish hotel overlooking the iconic Burj Khalifa and every day seemed like a fairy tale. King spared no expense, taking her to exquisite restaurants, shopping at high-end boutiques and organizing private tours of the city. One evening, as they walked along the beach under the setting sun, King turned to her with an intensity in his eyes that made her heart skip a beat. Rita, he began softly, I want you to know how much you mean to me. You've brought so much light into my life, and I can't imagine my future without you. Rita's breath hitched as she looked up at him. King, I want us to build a life together, not just a trip here or there, but something real, a home, a family, everything. Rita blinked back tears, overwhelmed by emotion. She had dreamed of this moment, but now that it was happening, it felt surreal. King pulled a small box from his pocket, opening it to reveal a delicate silver necklace with a tiny heart-shaped pendant. I know it's not a ring, not yet, he said with a chuckle, but this is a promise, a promise that I will always be here for you, that I will always protect and cherish you. Rita's heart melted as she let him place the necklace around her neck. King, I don't know what to say. This is everything I've ever wanted. They kissed under the soft glow of the moon, and for a moment it felt like the world had stopped. Everything was perfect. But perfection, as Rita would soon learn, could be an illusion. Rita's voice quivered as she recounted the harrowing details, her hands clenched tightly in her lap. It still felt unreal, the betrayal, the deceit, the physical and emotional scars she would carry for the rest of her life. The memory of King, the man she thought was her soulmate, haunted her like a shadow, lingering in the dark corners of her mind. It was all perfect until it wasn't, she continued, her eyes glossing over as she stared into the distance. He had never asked me for sex or even pushed for anything intimate. It felt strange at first, but he reassured me, always pulling the Christian values card, telling me we needed to stay pure, that intimacy would only come after marriage. He even said that before we could kiss, we needed to get tested for sexually transmitted diseases. Rita's heart raced as she remembered the day they went to Gaiac Hospital together. The atmosphere had been odd, Though at the time, she had dismissed it. King had taken control of everything. He held her hand, smiling and telling her that everything was fine, that they were just taking responsible steps for their future. She had trusted him, blindly following his lead, reassured by his careful attention to detail. That day at the hospital, everything seemed normal. We got our test results and everything was clear. I thought it was just another step toward a future together, something he cared about to make sure we were safe. A faint smile flickered across her face, remembering how she had imagined herself as Ogre's wife when King had invited her to his house for the first time. It was a beautiful, luxurious two-bedroom home in East Legon Hills, and she had felt like she was walking into her future. 
For the first time, they had kissed, and Rita had allowed herself to believe that everything was falling into place. The kiss had been soft, tender, and filled with the promise of a life she had always dreamed of. Then came the trip to Dubai, the lavish outings, yacht rides, and endless shopping trips that made her feel cherished, loved, and protected. It was a whirlwind romance, one she had never expected to experience. But as soon as they returned from Dubai, King had suggested yet another vacation, this time to Singapore. I didn't even think twice, Rita said, her voice barely above a whisper. Why would I? He had done nothing but prove his love to me. I trusted him with everything. They arrived in Singapore in mid-August, just a week after their Dubai trip. Everything started out just as it had before, romantic dinners, scenic tours, and cozy nights in luxurious hotels. But something had changed. For the first time, King had initiated intimacy, making love to her in their hotel room. He had poured them both glasses of wine, alcohol, something they had both sworn off in their commitment to their faith. I remember thinking it was strange, but he told me it was just a way to celebrate us. He said that sometimes we have to let go and just enjoy the moment. Rita paused, her voice cracking. I shouldn't have drunk it. I should have trusted my gut. After that, everything became a blur. She remembered the warmth of his body beside hers, the sound of their laughter as they clinked glasses, and then nothing. Darkness enveloped her, and when she woke, she was not in their hotel room, but in a cold, sterile hospital bed. I was disoriented in pain. My body felt weak, and I could barely keep my eyes open. The room was spinning, and I had no idea where I was. The nurse who came in didn't speak much English, but through broken words and gestures, I managed to piece together the nightmare I had just woken up to. One of her kidneys was gone. Rita's chest heaved with sobs as she relived the moment of realization. I couldn't believe it. I asked for King, but no one could find him. He was gone, vanished. I was alone in a foreign country with no family, no friends, and now no kidney. The days that followed were a haze of pain, confusion, and endless questions. The doctors had told her that she had been admitted after collapsing at the hotel, but there was no record of King ever visiting her or staying with her after the surgery. It was as if he had disappeared into thin air. Rita wept, calling his phone repeatedly, but each time the line was dead. I cried until there were no more tears left, she said, her voice breaking. I didn't know what to do. I felt betrayed, violated, and completely lost. Rita was forced to stay in the hospital for several days while she recovered from the surgery. Alone in her hospital bed, she replayed every moment with King in her mind, trying to make sense of it all. How could the man she loved, the man she trusted with her heart, do something so cruel? The memories of his tender words, his promises of a future together, all now felt like a sick, twisted joke. She had given him everything, and he had taken not only her trust, but a part of her body. When she was finally discharged from the hospital, Rita had no choice but to return to Ghana, broken in every sense of the word. The trip that had begun with promises of love and adventure had ended in betrayal and pain. Back in Ablekuma, her once vibrant spirit was shattered. The physical pain from her missing kidney was a constant reminder of the betrayal, but it was the emotional scars that hurt the most. She couldn't escape the feeling of foolishness. How could she have been so blind, so trusting? The man she thought was her savior had been the one to ruin her. 
I don't know who I am anymore, she confessed quietly. I've lost so much. My parents, my sense of safety, and now my health. But the worst part is, I don't know if I'll ever be able to trust again. Rita's life was forever changed. Though she tried to move on, the scars ran deep. Every time she looked at the necklace King had given her, the promise he had made, she felt a wave of nausea. The once beautiful symbol of their love now felt like a cruel reminder of the lies he had fed her. Rita's voice quivered as she spoke, the weight of her words hanging heavily in the air. It had been three years since that life-altering trip to Singapore, yet the pain, both physical and emotional, still gnawed at her. Sitting in her small apartment in Ablakuma, she could feel the scars, both the one that marred her body and the invisible ones etched deep into her soul. For me, she began taking a deep breath, a part of me tells me that maybe his relative or someone close to him needed a kidney transplant. He spent so much on me when we traveled to Dubai. The yacht rides, the fancy dinners, the shopping trips. I don't know how much all of that cost. And I don't know how much a human kidney costs either. Her voice wavered, the uncertainty tugging at her. But I believe, if he were into organ harvesting, wouldn't he have taken more? Wouldn't he have taken all my organs and dumped me somewhere, leaving no trace behind? I mean, no one might have even known where I was or what had happened to me. It was a twisted form of rationalization that had haunted her for years. In her mind, the thought that King may not have been a monster who sold organs for profit offered some small comfort. It was a tragic form of hope that perhaps there had been some shred of humanity in his actions, that maybe he had been driven by desperation rather than greed. I'm tempted to believe, she continued, her eyes filling with tears, that he wasn't a criminal mastermind. Maybe he found himself in a situation that warranted that decision. Maybe it was someone close to him who needed my kidney and he felt he had no other option. But even as the words left her lips, Rita knew that nothing could erase the betrayal. Whether King had stolen her kidney out of greed or necessity, the result was the same. He had taken something from her without her knowledge or consent, leaving her broken and scarred. King had vanished without a trace after the incident. Every effort to locate him had led to dead ends. His phone was disconnected, his social media accounts were deleted, and even the address he had given her for his home in East Legon Hills turned out to be false. It was as though he had never existed, as though their entire relationship had been a carefully constructed facade. The man she thought she loved, the man she had trusted with her life, was nothing more than a ghost. Rita's return to Ghana was a somber one. The physical pain from the surgery was nothing compared to the emotional torment she endured. Every time she looked in the mirror, the scar on her side reminded her of what she had lost. Not just her kidney, but her innocence, her trust, and her faith in love. For months, she spiraled into a deep depression, questioning everything she had ever known. Now, three years later, she sat in her apartment, a shadow of the woman she had once been. Trust was something she could no longer afford to give freely. Every relationship, every friendship was met with suspicion and fear. The church, once her place of solace and healing, had become a symbol of betrayal. After all, it was there that she had met King, the man who had turned her world upside down. I don't go to church anymore, Rita admitted, her voice hardened by the weight of her experiences. After what happened, I just couldn't. The place where I thought I could find peace and safety became the place where I met my greatest source of pain. I know it's not the church's fault, but I can't shake the feeling 
that I was betrayed there. She paused, her eyes narrowing as she continued. Organ harvesting is real in Ghana. Even the church isn't safe. I advise people to be extremely vigilant and never fall victim to such plots. These things are happening, and it's terrifying. You think you're safe, that you're surrounded by good people, but you never know who's watching or what their motives are. Rita's words were a warning to others, born out of her own suffering, she had been naive, trusting King because he seemed to embody the Christian values she held dear, but now she knew better. The world wasn't as simple or as kind as she had once believed. I trusted him, she whispered, her voice breaking. I trusted him with everything, and look where it got me. Now I tell people, trust no one not even the person sitting next to you in church. The only one you can trust in this life is God. Everyone else, they can betray you when you least expect it. Her eyes brimmed with tears, but she blinked them away, determined not to let the sorrow consume her. Despite everything, Rita was still standing. She had survived something that could have easily destroyed her. And while the scars would never fully heal, she had learned to live with them. Her journey of healing was far from over, but she was moving forward one step at a time. Rita's story is a powerful reminder of the deception that can hide behind the mask of love. Fake love is like counterfeit currency. It may appear real on the surface, but its value is non-existent. When you're caught up in the illusion, it feels genuine, mesmerizing even, but when the truth is revealed, it leaves you with nothing but regret and heartbreak. The pain of discovering that the person you thought loved you was merely playing with your emotions cuts deeper than any physical wound. It shatters your faith in people, and even worse, can make you question your worth. Micah 7.5 says, do not trust a neighbor, put no confidence in a friend. This verse speaks to the harsh reality of human nature. While we are encouraged to love and trust one another, we are also reminded to be cautious, for not everyone has pure intentions. There are people, like King in Rita's story, who may appear righteous, kind and loving, yet are nothing more than wolves in sheep's clothing. The illusion of their love can lead us astray, leaving us vulnerable to heartbreak and betrayal. O oh God, we come before you today, seeking your protection and guidance. Deliver us from wicked people who seek to harm us, especially those who hide their evil intentions behind the mask of love. O oh Lord, open our eyes to see the true nature of those around us. Give us the discernment to distinguish between real love and fake love. Help us, O oh God, to recognize those who genuinely care for us and those who only wish to take advantage of our trust and kindness. Father, we ask that you place your divine shield around us, protecting our hearts from those who would deceive and harm us. Lead us, O oh God, to people who reflect your love people who will cherish us, honor us, and never exploit our vulnerabilities. We pray that we will never fall victim to those who have malicious intentions, and instead that we find companionship in those who bring us closer to you. Lord, we know that in this world there are many who will try to deceive us, but we trust in you to reveal their true hearts. Give us the strength to let go of those who mean us harm and fill our lives with people who uplift us, who help us grow in love and faith. May we never mistake counterfeit love for the real, unconditional love that you have promised your children. We pray that through your grace we will not only protect ourselves from those who seek to destroy us emotionally and spiritually, but that we will also be beacons of your love, helping others avoid the traps of deceit. Dear viewers, 
We invite you to reflect on this story, to take it as a lesson and to stay vigilant in your relationships. Trust is sacred, but it must be earned and nurtured, not given freely to those who may take advantage of it. If this story touched your heart, we encourage you to subscribe to Anansi Web of Tales for more captivating stories like this one. Share this real-life experience with your friends and family to create awareness, so that together we can learn and grow in wisdom. Please let us know where you are watching from in the comments and let us continue this important conversation. Together, we can protect one another from the harms of false love and deceit. Protect our hearts, O Lord, and guide us towards relationships that are built on trust, respect, and love. In Jesus' name, we pray. Say Amen.